name is Bree Riley, and this is a short video for triathletes. So the intention around this is to offer you a series of mobility stretches as well as some breathing intention to help you with your recovery. Um, however, the best time to do this is post-training. Your muscles are warm, they've been worked, it will help to prevent soreness. Um, and obviously the more you do it, the better your mobility is going to be and thus your performance. So hopefully your training is going well. Um, we're going to start with our feet and stretching out our feet. I just like to make a quick note. I do have Koda joining us, my bear. Um, he may or may not sleep through the whole class, but I, I couldn't kick him out. It's too cute. So we're going to get started. Um, let's start on tabletop. Coming to all fours. Take your hands, bring them right underneath your shoulders, and your knees will come right underneath your hips. From here, we're just going to do a little bit of breath connection. So as you breathe in, drop your belly down, lift your chin up. And as you breathe out, tuck and curl. Pushing the mat away from you. Puff up your shoulders like an angry cat. You can do a couple more like this. Breathing in to drop your belly down. Open your chest. Exhale, tuck and curl. We're going to move through two more rounds or so. And really focus on your breath. So as we move through these mobility stretches today, I really want to challenge you to breathe as deep as you can. And think about deep breath combined with stretching like a bath for your muscles to wash them out as they open up. And it really helps you to feel super good afterwards. Last round. And just come back to a nice neutral spine in tabletop, so just a flat back. And we're going to start with a foot stretch, okay? So tuck your toes underneath you. And you're going to start to walk your hands back towards your knees as you sit your hips to your heels. Now this varies for everybody, how tight your feet are is going to really depend uh, or will choose how far into this you go. So if you already feel a lot of pressure in your feet, stay here or maybe even walk your hands forward to take some of that pressure off. If you're like, I'm doing good, then maybe you can walk your hands all the way back. But remember, it's not about trying to take care of your ego, it's taking care of your body. So don't try to do, more stretching is not better. And let me just, I'll keep it simple with that. If you have any toes that are a little bit tucked under and need some help, like pinky toes, give them some assistance. Relax your shoulders and just kind of take note. How do your feet feel? Big, deep breaths. And we're going to hold this for a little bit of time. And if you find that you're like, ah, it's too much, just walk your hands forward. No big deal. Release a little bit of that pressure. If this feels super tight for you, maybe this is a good one to include in your mobility routine that you may or may not already have. Option to just stay in stillness, focus on your breath, try to let your feet stretch out or you can add some movement, some neck stretches in, roll your head around. We're just going to stay for maybe two more breaths and again you can come out of it earlier if you'd like to. One more breath. Okay, the best part. Take your hands down, walk your hands out. Untuck your toes and tap the tops of your feet. Relax your feet, let them fall. It should feel really good. Okay, while we're here, we're going to add a chest stretch in for puppy pose. You're going to start by walking your hands forward. Keep your hips over your knees, maybe a little bit sitting back towards your heels. Keep walking your hands out as you bring your chest down towards the mat. So this is targeting our under shoulders. Maybe a little bit into your chest. Option to bring your pinkies down, thumbs up to get a little bit more. Relax your belly, take some big deep breaths and let your shoulders stretch out. Good one to do maybe right before you do your swim training. See if you can breathe a little slower. Stay here, maybe try something new by bringing your palms to touch. And then bring your hands back behind you like a little shark fin. And maybe walk your elbows in a little closer towards your ears. Don't stress it if this feels super tight or if your forehead's not touching. The purpose of a yoga practice is to stretch your body, not to do all of the poses to the mat. One more breath. Take your hands down if you brought them behind your head. Open up your shoulders a little bit, and then real gently push up onto your hands. And we're gonna do a hip flexor stretch next. Take your right leg and step your right foot towards your right thumb. So we're coming into a low lunge shape here. 
You're welcome to put blocks underneath your hands or you can come up for a balance here. But really our objective is to let the hips press forward. So you can get a stretch down through your hip flexor, especially with all of the cycling and running. And check that your front knee is stacked right on top of your ankle. If you find that as you're stretching, this angle starts to change and your knee is no longer over your ankle, just give a little inchworm of your toes forward, okay? Just a couple more breaths here. Try to relax your shoulders and again, notice where you feel tight and take big deep breaths. Maybe imagine sending your breath into the front of your hips. We're going to press back for a hamstring stretch here. This can also be done on your back with a strap around your foot. But we're going to start to pull our hips back and stop when your hips stack over your back knee. Working on straightening out through this front leg and maybe adding a flex to your toes. If you have a bend in your knee to keep your hands on the ground, that's okay. Again, we're just stretching your body. So find the points where you feel stretched, but you can still breathe easy. If you cannot breathe within your stretches, it means you're too far. It won't do more. Instead, your muscles will lock up and they will not open up for you. So you have to go more gentle. Less is more for sure. Two more breaths. I know this one's intense. This feels easy. Maybe you start to fold. Wherever you are is good enough. One more breath. And then pressing forward. You're going to bring your knees back together. And we're going to switch sides. Left foot goes up to your left thumb for that lunge. Let your hips press forward. Stop when your knee stacks over your ankle. If you lifted up before, do so. Find a similar variation. Big deep breath. start to open up you can keep letting them press forward again maybe inchworm your toes forward to keep that angle of knee over ankle relax your shoulders big deep breath staying very intentional through your stretches is the way to get the most out of them one more breath here And we'll pull back for our half splits. Slowly pressing the hips straight back. Try not to let them do any funky off directions. And then stop when your hips stack over your back knee. Flex through your front foot. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Breathe and stretch here. As much bend in your knee as you would like. Fold a little bit more or you stay. Maybe that just means a little bit more of a straight knee. Final two breaths here, relaxing as best as you can. Be kind to your body. It works very hard for you. Last one. Slowly start to add a bend to your front leg and then bring your knees back together again in tabletop. Give your hips a little shake from side to side. And our last one we're going to do here is a calf stretch. So you're going to take your right foot, reach it out long behind you, tuck your toes underneath you, and then use your hands to push down. So we're reaching our heel down towards the ground. Don't stress again about how far it is. Just find a good stretch here. And if you're very gentle, you can play around with allowing your heel to rotate out or in. Okay, out or in to kind of change where in your calf and your Achilles that you're getting a stretch. Breathe. Keep your fingers uh, pressing down, gripping, connected. And then we'll switch sides. Knees come together. Left leg extends. Excuse me, Philip. 
Caleb pressed his down towards the ground. <laughs> Big deep breaths. Fingers pressing, palms flat. Careful not to lock out your elbows. One more breath. And then coming forward. Okay, I'm gonna take a seat facing forward. Um, our second to last one we're gonna do is an inner thigh stretch. A lot of the movements with triathlons are forward, right? When you're swimming, hips are forward. When you're biking, hips are forward. When you're running, hips are forward. So our hips don't do a lot of work in the outwards direction as well as any sort of mobility there. So it can be helpful to keep those muscles healthy. So bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees open out. And it's okay if you get there and you're like, ah, this is so tight, just stay there. Remember, wherever you are is good enough. Okay, if this feels okay, maybe you can roll forward. Try to relax your shoulders. You can have arms straight if that feels easier for you. Breathe deep, be here. We'll just stay for two more breaths. Again, you can always pause this and stay longer. bringing your chest back up. You can keep your legs like this. It might be a little tricky, so you can go crisscross applesauce. You can stay forward, but for purpose of demonstration, I'm gonna turn sideways. This time we're gonna take a bind of your fingertips at your low back. If you find that you can't grab your fingertips, you can do wrists or elbows instead. Roll your shoulders back and push your hands down and away from you. Reach your chest up, take a nice deep breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Option to keep your chin lifted. I really like to drop mine down. It gives me a nice stretch between my shoulder blades. One more breath here. And you can stay like this, or if you'd like to add a little bit more mobility for your shoulders, we're going to fold forward. Reaching our head down, maybe letting your hands intentionally lift up. Don't worry about how far forward you fold. Just focus on your shoulders. Okay, one more breath. Good job. Slowly bringing your hands down as you reach your chest back up. And then lastly, we'll come onto our backs. We're gonna take a figure four here. This is for your outer hips. It's really good if you can do outer glute exercises. Um, just Google it, I won't go into it for this video. But again, strengthening your outer glutes can be really helpful for your knee stability, especially for running. All right, so laying down onto our backs. <laughs> We're gonna take a figure four. Cross your right leg over your left thigh. You're gonna flex through your toes. You're pulling your toes towards your knee. And keep this. This is really important to prevent any torque or twisting on your knee as you stretch. You can use your right hand to push your knee away from you. Or if you want more, try to keep your left knee in line with your hip as you pull the shape up towards your chest, maybe grabbing back around your left thigh. Take some deep breaths here. One more. And then stay like this, or maybe start to extend also into your left leg. So we're adding a little bit of a hamstring stretch. If mobility is there, maybe we reach towards our calves, our shins, our ankles, maybe the feet, but not stressing it. Find what works for your body and breathe. Feeling a big stretch through the right hip. Relax anywhere in your body that you can. And just slowly working on hugging the shape in towards your chest. One more breath here to stretch. Take your left foot down, switch and sides. Left leg crosses over the right, flexing your toes again. Pull this shape in towards you or push your knee away from you with your left hand. Check that your right knee is in line with your hip joint and it's not across center, too far open. Full breaths. Right leg again. 
again. Maybe you don't. Be kind to your body. Take time to say thank you for all of the miles that your body gives you. Relaxing anywhere that you can. Two more breaths. Breathe even deeper than you have this whole class. One more. Take this shape out. Uncross your legs. Give it a little shake. And we'll do our final two stretches. This one's going to be a little bit of a shorter hold, but you're welcome to stay longer. So you're going to start by extending your right leg up towards the ceiling. Flex your toes. If you want, you can put a strap or a belt or some sort of string around your foot and hold on to it here, or you can take it more active like I'm going to do. And all you're going to do is keep as straight of a leg as you can, as flexed of a foot as you can, and start to draw this leg across towards the left till you feel a stretch down through the side here, your IT band, maybe a little bit into your quad. We'll just say one more breath. And again, these ones can be intense. Come back up to the center, switch sides. Left leg extends, flex through your foot as straight of a knee as you can, even if that means a lower leg. And then draw slowly across towards the right just till you feel a stretch along the outside there. Breathe, relax your shoulders. See if you can flex your foot a little more. One more breath. Come back up to the center, take your leg down. And lastly, we're gonna do a twist. So start by crossing your right ankle just below your top of your knee. We're going to scoot our hips a little bit over to the left <laughs> and then drop our legs across to the right, getting a good little twist here. If you need to change how your legs are and have it be more comfortable or more or less intense, please do so. Let's do two full breaths, breathing in, out slow, relax your body, and one more like this. And out slow, relax your body. Pull your core in or belly button to your spine. Slowly bring your legs back up. Uncross them. Left ankle crosses just on the outside of your right knee. Hips will lift up and scoot to the right. So we're moving them to the right so we can drop our legs to the left and have our hips stay in line with our head. We want to twist with a nice straight spine. Spines don't like to twist when they are cattywampus. Again, with the two really deep, slow breaths. Breathing in and slow out through your nose. Relax your hips, your back. One more breath in. And out slow. Pull your core in, bring your legs back up to center. Uncross, maybe move your knees just a little bit side to side, shake out any last little bits of tension you have. We're going to do a really short shavasana, just three deep slow breaths today. You can pause it if you want longer. Extend your legs out, Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you, hands anywhere that you'd like them to be. And begin to take your slow, deep breath in and out through your nose, breathing in. As you exhale, breathe as slow as you can and relax your body as much as you can. Feel yourself softening as you breathe out. In and out for two more breaths at your own pace.
and last little moment of stillness or quiet or calm. And then as you're ready, rolling onto one side or rolling straight up to the seat. Hey, awesome work today. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Looks like Coda slept through the whole thing. I appreciate you. If you found this helpful, please give this a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos and feel free to comment with any feedback that you have. Again, my name is Bree Riley. Good luck with your training and thanks for watching.